it's really nice to see you online. Then also, uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Sarin, Professor Omat, and all the professors in the uh, uh, in Peso and uh, around our region. Okay, thank you. So today, uh, my topic is COVID-19 and HBV and CV elimination program. Are we stepping backward? This is a very big topic. I just try to focus on some of it. First of all, let's just uh, some update of the uh, HBV and LCV uh, epidemiology from our region. This slide and the following slide are gifts from Pro, uh, Dr. Uh, Pauline Chang from Wipro of WHO. She gave me just the, the updated slides. We can see over 50% of the HPV or HCV actually reside in our region, so-called Western Pacific region. Uh, you can see around here, uh, we have six, around 6% 6 of HPV prevalence and for HCV prevalence around 0 0.7. This is dramatic, has dramatically declined from the previous even higher rate, but it's still a little bit higher for HPV than most of the uh, rest of the uh, rest part of the world. Then similarly, it's not surprisingly see that the consequence of HPV and LCV, I mean the LCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, Again, we, our region account 60% of the total cases globally. So this means the disease burden is still very high. The good news is that the successful infant universal vaccination program upon all newborn, uh, new babies in our uh, Western Pacific region. This is uh, the already we achieved the goal of regional goal, less than 1% of surface engine among children already achieved. We can see most of our region have already achieved the goal and verified by WHO. And still some, some of the islands that, that still need to be finished the program, survey completed, but the results is pending to be published. The overall, the prevention is very, very successful. Now, just recently, the, uh, today actually, the uh, new WHO recommendation on prevention of mother to child transmission, MTCT of HBV. So this is try to be further strength, the prevention of mother to uh, child transmission. Uh, by doing so, we can see an even more quick, even steeper decline of surface antigen in very young age groups. Then in this guideline, in addition to the uh, vaccination and uh, HB, uh, hepatitis B immunoglobulin, and also we can treat the mother with very high viremia in the late uh, pregnancy. So this would be a further step to further strengthening or further uh, in, uh, to reduce the, the surface energy. So despite this kind of progress in prevention, we still have uh, uh, existing cases of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. But what's more important is we still, we can see for HBV in the left panel, we only have 20% of them diagnosed around 20% of those diagnosed treated and uh, only very small percentage virtually have virus suppression, virus control. Similarly, the cascade also very drop very sharply. For HCV, although we have very, very good cure, but still only very small percentage of patients diagnosed and treated and only less than 1% of all patients actually cured in our region. So this is what we are facing, although we made progress. So fortunately, WHO encouraged countries to prepare their own national action plan for wide hepatitis prevention and treatment. So you can see in our region that by the earlier the, this year, we can see that more than half of the countries already have uh, action plan 
uh, some of them on the development. So, I mean, many more uh, already have this uh, uh, plan, but uh, still have 15 countries, many in the Pacific region, uh, still have, do not have a uh, action plan. So we still need to do a lot of things. So this one slide showed accessibility and the coverage uh, of the HPV uh, medication and uh, DAA for HCV. Fortunately, only, wow, well, you see four, uh, I mean, uh, uh, four countries have no coverage, no insurance coverage, so still have to be out of pocket money that are being paid by the patient themselves. All the rest, all the other countries, you can see more or less the covered, they call the finance, that means the covered by the national uh, basic health care insurance or by the government special funding. So this is also a good step forward. So in the treatment of viral hepatitis B and hepatitis C. But unfortunately, uh, from the, the, the earlier this year, we experienced an outbreak of pandemic, so-called COVID. Already we have so many, many people affected, infected, and then many of them died. So in our region, we also have facing or still facing this very severe uh, pandemic of COVID-19. So this just slide summarize the COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 infection and the liver. On one hand, this infection of this virus may directly or indirectly through immune modulation, uh, immune reaction to injure the liver via the kind of, uh, a lot of series of cytokines. At the same time, we, we can see that some patients have pre, so-called pre-existing chronic liver disease like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, NASH or other diseases. So that means COVID-19 uh, uh, biologically can affect people of the liver. So you can see according to several meta-analysis, the liver injury, the incidence of liver injury in COVID-19 patients is around 25%, ranging from 16% to as high as over 50%. So you can see in patients with COVID-19, from 2 to 19, 11% have pre-existing chronic liver disease. So all this cause the problem, pose challenges to us. So again, this slide showing the HPV, specifically HPV and LCV uh, 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 co-concurrence. So you can see for HPV, mostly reported from mainland China, you can see some series as high as over 10% of patients are uh, of COVID-19 actually were chronically infected with HPV. Then those with HPV have developed more severe outcomes compared with those without. Then of course, for HCV it's less problematic. Uh, so less than 1% have the, the uh, patients of COVID-19 have seen this. So this is uh, most uh, uh, large series in China. We can see over 1,000 patients. You can see that around 2% of patients have HPV and uh, over around 20% of patients have elevation of ALT and OST. And uh, compared with those without HPV infection, those with HPV infection have a higher rate of elevation of ALT and AST. Again, confirm the previous summary of the data around the world. I'm sorry, this slide changed somehow. Uh, the, the picture becomes smaller, maybe just because of the compressed. The rate of 30-day mortality in patients with cirrhosis and COVID-19 in Italy also showing that the, those with higher child abuse score, those with um, uh, or, uh, those uh, uh, cliff score have worse uh, outcomes. So anyway, this slide showing that's the from uh, the so-called uh, Ecoli study 
they're organized by a PESO, especially by, I think, Professor Sarin, Professor Ahmad, and also Professor Zhao Lao. We can see in our region, we can see the incidence of severe uh, COVID-19 among chronic liver disease, common cirrhosis, and decommon cirrhosis is increasing. Of course, that means underlying liver disease do increase the severity of COVID-19. The incidence of liver injury, again, is similar. Have a, the stepwise increase among those with chronic liver disease without cirrhosis, with cirrhosis or decompensation. So this is, again, this uh, related with the uh, CTP score. If the higher CPT, CPT child appeal score, uh, the, the hazard is also increased. So that means we are facing the, the, this challenge. So to, in response to this, we Chinese society, uh, Chinese uh, Medical Doctor Association, together with Chinese Society of Hepatology, issued a protocol for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of liver injury in COVID-19. Organized by some of the professors, like Professor Zhuang Hui, Professor Wei Lai, Professor Hou Jinlian, and Professor Nianqin, and some others you know very well. This published in Chinese, it helped the clinical doctor to care patients with COVID-19. So uh, that similarly, we a panel published an expert panel consensus recommendation for patients with HPV and HCV during the COVID-19 pandemic. So overall, I think if the patient already on treatment for HPV or HCV, we need to continue. For those with non-COVID-19 patients, we still continue the treatment. For newly diagnosed patients, we may initiate the antiviral therapy of HPV or HCV if clinically uh, indicated. That means we have to balance the, the strength of resource and the, the, the uh, emergence, uh, urgentness of the, uh, this uh, uh, disease. For HPV, for those with COVID-19, oh, if already on treatment, we, we still need to continue. If no, not, not started yet, we need to consider whether the patient have flare of hepatitis B or patient plan to receive the immune suppressive therapy. That means we need to consider treatment to prevent the, the, uh, the flare, the reactivation. For HCV, usually we do not start it, the, the treatment. ASLD and ESO published a similar guideline. I don't need to go to further details. I just want to uh, emphasize we need to take care of patients with HPV and HCV, even those with cirrhosis or with HCC, or those patients need liver transplantation. So this slide summarizes uh, what I've talked about what I need to do for patients with chronic liver disease, for HCV, HPV, or, uh, uh, or other liver diseases. In China, to in, in respond to this, we can now prescribe patients with three months of medication for HPV or HCV or cirrhosis. We can have internet clinic. We can deliver the medication uh, by uh, email service. We have a lot of online uh, webinars for viral hepatitis uh, prevention and uh, control. I think uh, Professor Darla also uh, 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 attended and uh, participated a lot of activity. For World Hepatitis Day, uh, in the last days and today, in Beijing and other parts of China, we uh, participated a lot of, uh, a lot of activities. So again, this slide, of course, today's activity organized by a pencil. Then, uh, lastly, of course, this is a challenge. A lot of staff will redeploy services may repurpose the for COVID-19. Some services may uh, uh, shut down temporarily. The money will redirect it. However, we also have a chance. Now everyone understand that health is a published good. Public health is very important. And innovation in delivery of service, like uh, uh, the, as I mentioned, the internet clinic, and also try to do a lot of things we cannot do before the outbreak of COVID-19. So finally, I'd like to just say 
despite the pandemic of COVID-19, we are not stepping back forward in the control, in the elimination of our hepatitis B and hepatitis C. We are still moving forward, although a little bit slow, but we are going forward slowly and steadily. So I hope we, by doing so, we can achieve uh, our goal, so-called hepatitis-free future. Uh, also, I remember many years ago, Professor George Law have a hepatitis-free generation. Uh, I think it's a similar uh, 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 mission. In the future, we have, we have a hepatitis-free future. Lastly, I would like to thank a uh, special thank to Dr. Paul Lin Chang, who worked at uh, the West Pacific uh, Regional Office, WHO, for her kindly providing the updated slides. Now, this is uh, the, the, in the middle, the lady, uh, Dr., uh, Dr. Chang. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.